Hi there, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to start um, putting together my Mission Gold watercolour palette. I'm going to um, pour these into the half pan wells. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is actually write on the half pans um, what they are using this Sharpie pen. I'm going to put the colour and hopefully the pigment numbers on there. If my I have got quite big writing, <laughs> so whether I can fit them all in, but I'll try my best. I do this because sometimes these half pans and stuff fall out um, on occasions, or they get m uh, mixed up. So I I'd rather write on there what is in what is in what is in the pan. And um, once I've done that, I'll pour them. I pour all the paints within the pans there signed to. I'll leave them then without touching them for about two weeks, see how they've dried, if I need to put other layers on and things like that. So I'll just see how they've dried and then I will do swatches. So this video is going to be a few weeks in the making, but I hope that um I hope that you'll enjoy it. <laughs> poured all the paints into the half pans now so I need to wait for them to dry. Um, I've included the white and the black just because I wanted to keep the whole set together but I'm, I'm pretty sure if I get used to using the paints I'll probably remove them um, and replace them because I like to use gouache or mix my own uh, dark neutral or black tone. So the yellows and the reds look beautiful. That bright opera is really really shocking. It's like a shocking pink. Um, it's really, really lovely. So I'm going to put these in a cupboard now, but let them dry out, probably put two to three weeks, and then we'll do some swatching and um, maybe do a little painting. The paints have dried, so I'm just going to go in swatching now. I'm just putting the Chinese white, which is a PW6, just to see how opaque it is. Then we're going in with lemon yellow, which is PY3. Um, at a certain point here, I, I um, when I put the clear water down, the paint doesn't seem to travel far. And I thought maybe it was the paper wasn't particularly like flat, so I now go in and put some tape, tape, try and tape it down a little bit with some 
um, masking tape. And the next colour, once I've done that, the next colour is Perm Yellow Deep. This is something that I've noticed with these paints is that they initially don't seem to travel far. Um, I've done these swatches before without having to tape the tape the paper down and it's been fine with other paint. So anyway, so we get back on this Perm Yellow Deep is PY65. Then we've got Perm Red, which is PR112. So the next one, it says Quinacridone Rose, but it's not as bright opera. Um, obviously, I can't do a video without something going wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is bright opera, and that's a PV10, PR122. So the next one is Quinacridone Permanent Rose, which is PV19. And then the next one is Rose Madder, which is PR176. I, I can't do a video without messing something around. So yeah, them three, they were on the wrong. Um, they were, uh, I messed it up. I, I don't know what I did, but I messed it up. Um, so the next one then is Bright Clear Violet, which is PV3 colon 2. PB29 and PR122. Um, I was surprised at how many different pigments. And again, let's see, it doesn't seem to travel very far. But the next one is Cerulean Blue, and that's PB15 colon 3. It didn't look like a Cerulean Blue to me, but hey -oh. Um, The next one is Cobalt, Cobalt Blue number, number 1, and that's PB29 and PB15 colon 3 again. Um, again, it was an odd cobalt blue for me. Uh, the next one is peacock blue, which is PB15 colon 3 and PG7, which also seemed like a bit of an odd, an odd colour. Again, didn't travel well. And the next one, now this is a bit of a shocker for me, this was ultramarine deep, and that's PB29 and PV15. Um, like, I've got quite... A, few sets of um watercolors and i was quite shocked to find that the ultramarine deep were uh, two two pigments in um right so the, sorry the next one was indigo and that's pb29 pb27 and pbk7 which again didn't quite look like an indigo to me but so then the next one is Vir viridian and that's pg7 Okay, see, it doesn't seem to travel. I don't know whether it's because the paper went flat. So I go and put some more masking tape down to see if that helps. But the pigments definitely don't travel. And, and I've not had this issue before. So I'm wondering whether they've got a bit less dispersant in. Um, so the next one is Hooker's Green. That's PG36, PBR25 and PY150. And then we've got Sap Green which is PG36 and PY150. Again, I'm having trouble with these paints moving, so I'll try and uh, put it down. They, they seem to be really slow moving. They do travel, but they seem to just be very, very slow. A bit like me when I'm walking. <laughs> um, yellow ochre, again, I've got single pigment yellow ochres, and this is PY42 and PY150. That yellow ochre is extremely opaque. And so is this raw sienna, which is PY42, PY65 and PBR25. If you see, this is baffling me about them not travelling that well. But I, I, I'll need to use them a lot more before I comment on that, I think. And next one is burnt sienna. That's PBR25, PR112 and PY150. And then we've got Burnt Umber, which is PBR7, PBR25 and PY150. Again, didn't feel like it travelled well. And then we go on to a Red Brown, which is just PBR25. And then we've got Van Dyke Brown, and that's PB7. And as you can see, I'm like trying, what's going on with these paints? <laughs> It is baffling me, but like I said, I need to really use them a lot more. So there's a bit of movement there. Um, so next we're going in with Ivory Black, which is PBK7. 
and and the last one I moved and that was yellow orange P O seven three P Y six five. Um, I moved it because I um, that was something else I did wrong. I forgot to write. I missed it out, so I moved it. And I was just gonna let these dry, and then while they're drying, I'm just gonna do like a little painting, and then we'll come back and have a look at our swatches. So just gonna go and recreate a painting that I've done previously in my sketchbook. Um, I've really watered down the green to to get it that color. Uh, um, just to do like the background and I've just put some of the uh, rose madder and um, some of the clear violet in that as you can see that that is sap green and that is really really bright so I just wanted to see how the paints acted so I, I actually mixed that brown um, using the green and uh, just to see if it blooms because some of my other paints if I did that when the paint was still wet it, the blooming would be horrendous and although that is bloomed it's nowhere near like um some of my other paints so just mixed which was a lovely lovely mix just added some of the um rose madder to the viridian hue to make it that really really dark green color that you've got there um, this is a very loose painting. It's you know, please don't judge me on it. <laughs> um, I find that I find it very difficult to paint while filming. I feel I feel very very much under pressure, um, <clears throat> and I never actually like my paintings. I much prefer not um paint uh, like not filming when I'm painting. I feel like my work is so much better. Um, so just like I said, this is a very very loose painting. Um. And I'm just going in now. I've mixed that brown. Um, I used uh, I used the sap green and the rose madder, I believe it was, to mix that brown, which turns out nice. It was a nice. It turns into a nice shade. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going in, added some branches in, as you can see, in in small places. Um, excuse me. I've I've got something stuck in my throat, which is helpful. So yeah. Um. So I, the colors I've used. Uh, are the clear violet the uh, um sorry quinacridone quinacridone permanent rose not rose madder so I use the clear violet and the bright um opera opera even so I've got um I just let layers dry then and then the next part now I've I've picked up some white Windsor and Newton gouache just to, and added um uh, some color to to it and just to make her a bit more opaque so I could layer on top of it and give her a little bit more depth. Um so yeah so as I as as you can see you can see what I'm doing. I've done it with most of the colours on there and I'm just gonna go and do some splatters now. Just just because it's quite a loose painting, you know, it's not and I, I like doing splatters and I also like it when it gets all over my room as well as you can might be able to see. When I paint in dry, and I'm just gonna go and do some glazing because I have swatches I've dried. So obviously the first one is the lemon yellow. Again, the, uh, once these once these have dried, you can see that they've glazed. But going pouring the paint down, um, I th I think because the colours are so bright and opaque, it's quite difficult to see on some of them. You've, that you've even put them down, but once they've dried, you can you can see, um. All these colours are very um pigmented, some are very opaque, like, like extremely opaque, like I'm surprised they're so opaque. Um and they were a little bit weird to or not weird, I don't want to say sorry, weird is the wrong term. They were odd to me because I um I've never used them before and I don't feel like I've used any paints like them, um, which might sound a little bit odd. Um, but yeah, so I, I, as I see in some of some of the colours, you can see straight away the glazing. But I promise, once they dry, you can you can see that they've been glazed. Like this yellow ochre, I'm at the moment not too much a fan of. And um, when I don't understand why it's, why it's a double pigment rather than a single pigment, I got a feeling about that, um, which I'm not, I'm not gonna say. And the other. Th the other part is the yellow oak and raw sienna are very, very pigmented and very opaque. Um, you can hardly see the line. Look, it's covered the line completely. So yeah, I'm just gonna go in with the others, and once this dry, we'll come back and I'll show you what they look like once they're dried. 
So painting's dry, just going to remove the masking tape. Please don't judge me on the painting. <laughs> um, I just remove the masking tape and yeah, I actually really enjoyed using these paints. They are super pigmented. It was a bit of a different experience I felt compared to other watercolour paints that I've used in the past. Um, I'm just getting, actually, this, this is the original painting from my sketchbook that I absolutely love doing. But that was just using cheap Cotman watercolour paints on a cheap sketchbook, watercolour sketchbook. But yeah, the the, pig, the the painting itself, the paints were really enjoyable to use. If not, they felt different to some other paints. Well, a lot of other paints that I'm used to using. So yeah, I was, I was happy with it, although the experience was a little bit different. Um, I'm just bringing out my swatches now. As you can see, they, they have glazed. Um, you can see some of them. Some of them you can't see because they're just so, like, pigmented or so. Some of them are quite opaque, um, especially the yellow ochre and the raw sienna. But this is everything we've done to today side by side. Um, the one thing I did notice though is that there's a bit of a shine on them, as you can see now, where I've uh, glazed. Uh, the the it's things quite shiny, which is quite odd. But anyway. Thank you so much for watching the video on my first, first thoughts on Mission Gold and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.